Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Deborah Murray, and today we are going to talk about urinary tract infections. We'll talk about lower or bladder cystitis and upper infections involving, say, the kidney, pyelonephritis, asymptomatic bacteria, the causes, diagnosis and treatment, and finally, prevention. So last time we met, we talked about antibiotic use and resistance and how it's caused a worldwide problem with multi-drug resistant organisms, and we need to limit antibiotic use and problems that you can have with antibiotic use. So you might be wondering, hey, why am I telling you this again? Well, this also relates to antibiotics used to treat UTIs. You can find the link below to the prior video for more information. So bacteria live with us. Not all bacteria are causing disease. The trick really is deciding which bacteria are causing a problem and which one aren't. Bacteria are in our mouth, they're on our skin, they're in the vagina, they're in our GI tract or colon, and it's what causes stinky poop. So here's a picture of the urinary system. The blood flows down into the kidneys and it's filtered, and the kidneys remove any products not necessary, including excess water. It goes down the ureters, into the bladder, and out the urethra. Now, women get more urinary tract infections and their urethra is very close to bacteria. The urethra is near the vaginal opening, near the anus, and bacteria travel up the urethra. So the risk factors for a UTI includes being female, poor hygiene, prior UTI, sexual activity, especially with diaphragms and spermicides, and changes in the bacteria that normally live inside the vagina, like what occurs in menopause and also in the use of spermicides. There can be structural problems in the urinary tract that block the flow, like an enlarged prostate or kidney stones. There can be neurologic problems that delay emptying of the bladder. Pregnancy is a risk factor, age, and also a chronic urinary catheter. Now, this talk mostly refers to patients without a chronic urinary catheter. So bladder infection or cystitis symptoms include pain or burning with urination. You might urinate more frequently than usual. You could have pain or discomfort in the lower abdominal area or groin and a feeling like you need to empty the bladder despite the fact that it's already emptied. Or you could have blood in the urine. With pyelonephritis, that's generally more severe. It involves the kidney or ureter. People have fever, chills, and can have low back pain or pain on the side of their back, the flank pain, nausea, vomiting. And again, they're more ill. So how do you diagnose a UTI? You should only test for a UTI if you have symptoms. Why? Because bacteria may just be sitting in the area and not causing a true infection. Now your clinician may send a, what's called a dipstick test. And well, this is a pretty good test provided you have symptoms. Culture however, is highly recommended if you have a history of recurrent UTIs or a severe infection, or you've been in the hospital or healthcare facilities where you might have a risk of a multi-drug resistant organism. Now again, this is a diagram of the urethra. You can see the urethra is close to the vagina opening, the vaginal opening, and also very close to the anus. The perineum is the area between the vagina and the anus, and this can get contaminated with bacteria. 
This is why it is so important to wipe from front to back or from the front of the urethra towards the anus to ensure that all the urine that is collected is a very clean sample and to ensure that you don't contaminate your urethra with bacteria that might be at the perineum or the anus. Now you should be getting cleansing cloths to wipe before a midstream urinary sample is taken. So the most common bacteria, it's E. coli. Well, funny thing, that's also found in fecal material or, or poop. The area becomes contaminated with E. coli and the bacteria makes its way up to the urethra. So for treatment, we want to limit the antibiotics. Drink lots of water, a minimum of eight to 12 glasses per day. So studies have shown that drinking more water at the onset of your symptoms can in some cases be even adequate to treat cystitis. But there are a lot of caveats here. So I recommend that you discuss this with your healthcare provider. You'll likely need an antibiotic if your symptoms do not resolve by 24 hours. And the duration of antibiotics that are used to treat really depends on the infection. For a simple bladder infection or cystitis, three to seven days are adequate. And it depends on the case and it depends on the antibiotic that you use. For a, a more severe kidney or upper tract infection, you will require a longer course of antibiotics, a minimum of five to 10 days. I usually recommend somewhere closer to around 10 days. But again, it depends on the case and the antibiotic. If you have hardware in place like urinary stents, you're going to need a longer course of antibiotics likely, and it just becomes more complicated. So I'm told that you have to have B-roll to keep people interested. So do, 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 do. the next section, <laughs> Um, well, yeah, that's a toilet paper roll, but I didn't really touch my mouth with it. But, you know, let me sanitize my hands anyway. <laughs> you know, it's crazy being an ID doc because you just realize these organisms are everywhere. Um, in any event, asymptomatic bacteria, what is that? Well, it's bacteria in the urine without having any symptoms. A positive urine culture may be colonization, bacteria just sitting there, or it could be infection. That's why you should not have an evaluation for a UTI unless you have symptoms. There are limited exceptions like pregnancy, neutropenic fever, or prior to a urologic surgery. Avoid antibiotics if you do not have symptoms and talk with your provider. If you don't have symptoms, but for some reason your provider has checked your urine and tells you that you have a UTI, honestly, you should confront them. Show them this video and do everything you can to avoid antibiotics. This shows how often you can see asymptomatic bacteria. In other words, bacteria in the urine without symptoms. If I just went out and checked diabetic women, for example, up to 27% of those cultures would be positive without symptoms. For elderly women in a long-term care facility, up to 50% of them will have a positive culture. So no symptoms equals no antibiotics, aside from the exceptions that we talked about. So what are the prevention tips? Well, incre <laughs> increase fluid intake, eight to 12 glasses of water per day. Studies have shown that this can actually prevent UTIs in people that have had recurrent UTIs. 
Other reasonable approaches will keep the area around the urethra clean. This includes that perineal area and the anus area and always wipe front to back. In other words, from the front towards the anus. Clean the area before and after sex, especially if you have recurrent UTIs. Urinate after intercourse or sex and at the first signs of any need. Sometimes you might need to change a spermicide or contraception, especially if you have recurrent UTIs. For recurrent UTIs in postmenopausal women, it has been shown that intravaginal estrogen can help prevent those recurrent UTIs. In theory, it could potentially be promoting some cancer, particularly in women that have had a, a history of estrogen responsive to, excuse me, tumors. But I have never read or seen a case of that. And to my knowledge, there's no clear evidence Despite that, I usually recommend that patients discuss this with their primary care provider or their gynecologist. Other possible benefits include cranberry juice. And, you know, there really isn't much risk to cranberry juice if it has sugar in it. So if you're a diabetic, you might want to obtain the diet cranberry juice. Sometimes it can cause people a little bit of heartburn but I look at everything as a risk benefits kind of situation. The potential benefit outweighs the potential risk of cranberry juice. Other things that need more study include methanamine, probiotics, and D-mannose. So remember your IQ, stay informed, ask questions. Why am I getting this? Do I have a bacterial infection? What is the risk and what is the benefit? Thank you and stay tuned for more infectious disease topics.